been working on this upper section for about several hours, but here is good light. I have a lot of digging going in. What I'm really trying to do is get the sensitive uh, sense of edge lost and found, not really delineated like this edge so much. I, I want to keep the softness, maybe a little bit of found here. Tomorrow this will be a little drier, maybe a, a little easier, a little more controlled with the dry clay. Again, we pick up this edge here. And play with the sense of featherness. And finally getting it to where it feels like a feather rather than a leaf. It's taken me several days to... get that and of course when we transfer it it'll be easy because I'll understand all the movements I'll have worked it out in my mind and these quills are quite interesting upon observation is actually quite a bit of an undercut to the quill We want to make that very delicate. Everything about a feather is delicate, lacy. We want to avoid these deep, dark gouges. I feel like I'm finally getting a real breakthrough now. Um, the feathers have to have a long shape and it has to be consistent with um, the aerodynamics. So they have to be long, smooth. Uh, I was getting ripples in them and that was making them feel like they were uh, uh, leaves. So you have a long arcing shape and then you have basically a half quarter round shape with a curl on the side. So I'm just barely starting to get it. I find it was better to just work on a section of the wing and figure out how I'm going to attack this and uh, it was a real frustration. I've done feathers before and never been happy. They all look too mechanical. After the clay I will make a plaster cast and further refine the wing in plaster. For reference I'm using the monumental statuario from Cemetery Stadiliano in Genoa, Italy. Particularly, I fancy have a fancy of Giulio Monteverde, and I like to also fashion my wings similarly to Bouguereau. Bouguereau's wings become personal, invite the viewer in. An earlier video I spoke about the fatty tissue in the female hand to make it look less bony and death-like. This is a good example of Bouguereau's style. It's necessary to continue to play at this, <clears throat> drying in the quill, pulling back the clay. Now, I'm a little bit past the experimental stage, but I'm still slightly experimental. Hours and hours and hours, countless hours of trying to figure out how to make it look right, like the great masters of 19th century Italian sculpture. There is a little formula um, <clears throat> that you can use. You can resort to the golden rectangle and 
figure out the um, widths and lengths of the feathers using the golden rectangle and that will uh, assuage any um, awkward um, uh, what would you call it uh, proportions of the feathers the, the feathers need to be proportionally correct even though they're not anatomically correct by any stretch of the imagination I, it's more important for me to get the style of these 19th century Italians and 18th century Italians um, mostly 19th century but I'm really trying to achieve that style now if you notice that feather just playing with those very very delicate edges soft and found what I'm trying to achieve with the line is visual poetry with the shadow it's the sense of drama and rhythm and pace there's a tempo to this just like there is in a, in a piece of music I'm trying to control the viewer with the tempo so with the light and dark in line you have a tempo and a rhythm with the placement of the feathers the placement of the hands the hair you have aspect and position so you have dance uh, terminology as well as uh, music terminology to help you perhaps I should say alignment <coughs> instead of aspect um, that's probably more correct with dance but it's not entirely incorrect to use aspect because there's a quality with aspect if you were to ask me how long it would take to just work out this little section that I'm working in I'd probably tell you five ten maybe twenty minutes at the most the fact is I don't have a good clock in this I just get enveloped and forget about the time I actually spent several hours on that little area but I'm figuring it out this is a lonely profession you've got to be in the studio all hours of the day and night by yourself no one standing over your shoulder to tell you what's right and wrong and countless hours of just being by yourself it gives you time to think and to not think if the work gets monotonous you can listen to a radio show but when you really have to concentrate you have to avoid listening to anything but your own mind notice the dramatic difference when I change my light now I can start to see things I want to see things as a coherent uh, <coughs> shape between light and dark I don't want to see a bunch of chopped up little uh, shapes I want to see everything merging with and tra uh, transitioning smooth smoothly it's very important to to really look at the shapes with uh, different light sources uh, when you shift your light you'll all of a sudden notice things that you never noticed before But every shadow, every nuance is intentional. So now I'm putting on the little little finishing touches that I think I'll have this figured out. I'm sure with a good night's sleep I'll have a much clearer perspective on how to handle the rest of the wing surfaces so in the modern age of gadgets it's my hope 
that I can make something withstand the test of time. That at least outlive me. And if it can, it can outlive as long as the stone. We only have time.